We want to. <clears throat> I want to take a few minutes this morning, and we're going to get right into the message. But before we do, I've got a little video here that I want you to watch. Y'all go ahead and play it. A gentleman was walking through an elephant camp, and he spotted that the elephants weren't being kept in cages or held by the use of chains. All that was holding them back from escaping the camp was a small piece of rope tied to one end of their legs. As the man gazed upon the elephants, he was completely confused as to why the elephants didn't just use their strength to break the rope and escape the camp. They could easily have done so, but instead, they didn't try to at all. Curious and wanting to know the answer, he asked a trainer nearby why the elephants were just standing there and never tried to escape. The trainer replied, When they were very young and much smaller, we used the same size rope to tie them, and at that age it's enough to hold them. As they grew up, they are conditioned to believe that they cannot break away. They believe the rope can still hold them, so they never try to break free. The only reason that the elephants weren't breaking free and escaping from the camp was that over time they adopted the belief that it wasn't possible. I want to give you just a second to let that sink in this morning. The title of my message is Breaking Free from a Slave Mentality. Breaking Free from a Slave Mentality mentality. We're going to go to John 8 and verse 31 to begin this morning. <clears throat> then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, we be Abraham's seed, and we were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, you shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin, or the slave of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Amen. You may be seated this morning. <clears throat> in verse number 34, Jesus makes it plain that Whosoever willfully commits sin is a slave to sin. And I want to talk about the, the mentality that we have sometimes. Even after we get saved, even after Jesus comes in, I want to talk about how our mentality and what we think about our situations keep us tied to certain things and places and people and we believe that we cannot be free from that because of our mentality we just saw the elephant and the rope story was that not awesome as big as those animals are they could snap that rope just like this but because it was a learned behavior they learned because they tried and they tried and they tried when they were small and the rope was just too strong. So as they grew, they thought that the rope could hold them. People are living their lives today in bondage, in slavery, in a slave mentality because what, what they couldn't overcome before they knew Jesus, they think they can't overcome after Jesus comes in and they stay in bondage. We're going to get into it here in just a minute. Amen. Jesus said, whosoever willfully commits sin is a slave to it. He serves it. He has no expectation of ever being free from it. And we've often heard stories about prisoners who when they're turned loose after years of being in prison, after years, and, and, and they are used to that lifestyle, amen, they, they get in there, they're, they're what they call institutionalized because they don't know how to function in a normal setting, so they revert back to that, amen. Even after they're free, they'll commit a crime to go back because they're not comfortable 
in a different setting. So it is in the spiritual realm. People get saved and then the first thing that comes, the first trouble that comes, they want to revert right back to where they were before because it's the only way they know to live and to function. But I want somebody to get a hold of this word today that you, just like this elephant, all he had to do was take his big old leg and just pull it a, just a little. I want to propose to you today all you got to do is take one step toward Jesus. One step. Let him set you free. Let him do the freeing this morning. Amen? Satan hopes that your mind never gets free. He hopes that your mind never gets free. I want, I want you to look at this picture right here. And we're going to read scripture to back this up in just a second. But here sits this man and he's sitting in this prison cell. The door's open. But he's sitting there. God sent Jesus to free us. He sent him to free us. Amen. Let's go to Isaiah 42, 6 through 9. Isaiah 42, 6 through 9. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles. Listen right here. To open the blind eyes. Listen really close. To bring out the prisoners from the prison. And, somebody say and. And. Them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another. Neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. I want you to pay close attention to verse number 7 right here. To open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners. Put that picture back up. To bring out the prisoners from the prison. And then he says, and... Those who sit in the dark prison house. Those are two separate things. To set me free as a prisoner of sin, I accepted Jesus as my Savior. He came in. He's Lord and Master of my life. But it's up to me to get out of the darkness. It's up to me to get out of the prison cell. It's up to me. The door is open. Amen. This man is sitting in this cell, staying in this cell by choice. That door is open. He can walk out anytime he wants to. I want to tell you, if you've called on the name of the Lord and you've asked him to be your Savior, there is no excuse for still being where you were before you ever met him. There's no excuse because he's opened the door. He has set you free, amen. But you have a slave mentality that tells you, I am not like they are. I can't be like they are. I can't do just like the elephant. Here he is, a big old thing with this little bitty rope tied around. How do we look in the spirit when we have the Holy Ghost, the blood of Jesus Christ, and we're sitting in a dark prison house? How do we look, amen, when we're, when we're bound in our mind and we cannot have the, we cannot conceive that we can be free and free indeed, amen? To sit, to bring out prisoners from the prison and those who sit in darkness, slaves out of the prison house. I want to tell you the difference in a prisoner and a slave. A prisoner, you look up the definition, is someone who's chained, Someone who's chained to something or someone. A prisoner and they're held captive. A slave is a servant. Look up the definition. A servant. It serves. It's used to serve a purpose. A slave used to serve if a wall comes down and a, a prisoner will try to escape let the walls come down a prisoner's in the run let his chains break he's gonna run but a slave 
who is loyal. I was loyal to sin. I did it. I did it voluntarily. I did it and I liked it. I was loyal to it. I served it. The word just said if we willfully commit sin, we're a slave to it. It means we serve it. We serve. I woke up and I did it because that's what I like to do. It's who I was. That's what I like to do. I served it. I had opportunity to get free, but I always reverted back to what I was. Hallelujah. A slave, a servant to sin. But if a wall comes down, a prisoner will run. A slave will stand there in fear, and out of fear will build the wall back. Scared to move beyond what he's ever been allowed to do, what he's ever done. Scared to move beyond, afraid of the unfamiliar, so it keeps him pulling back and pulling back and pulling back. I can't be holy like them folks. I can, I'm different than, I, no you ain't. Hallelujah. No, you're not. Amen. You're not different. You are created by the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. There's not a hair on your head he hasn't numbered. There's not a problem that you have had or ever will have that he is not master and Lord over if you give him the reign. Amen. A slave will in fear build the wall back. Amen. Opportunity does not free all slaves. Did you know that? I, I just made a little note here. Simply removing obstacles to freedom won't help those who have a slave mentality. You can text them. Let me preach right here just a minute. You can beg them. You can shame them. You can plead with them. Try to turn on every kind of, of sermon you can when they're in the house. You can do everything that you can do. You can pet them. You can fuss at them. You can cuss at them. You can do whatever you want to do and you will not change. You will not change them. Only Jesus can. Opportunity doesn't free all slaves because not everybody wants to be free. Amen. Not everybody wants to be free. This man is sitting here, and it could be for many different reasons, but some folks just don't want to. Amen. Hallelujah. Obstacles to freedom removed won't help those who have a slave mentality because they experience discomfort, trials, burdens, etc. They'll return and submit to the old system. Because it's, listen, it's where they believe they belong. Have you ever heard somebody who's just gotten saved say, man, I ain't even got no friends no more. I have. Folks, I want to tell you, you be careful. I don't care who they are. I don't care what they look like. I don't care what they're dressed like. I don't care what they smell like. I don't care. This church, when they come through the door, I want them to know that they are welcome in this place. Unless you a devil and you got intentions of causing division, you are welcome in this place. And we will love you. And there's no big eyes and there's no little yous. People have the mentality and Satan will feed that. They have the mentality that they cannot be anything other than what they have been. Amen. They believe they belong there. Listen to this though. On the other hand, a prisoner. Something happens. Something happened to me <laughs> when the blood of Jesus covered me when I called on him and he come in and he turned the light on and I saw all that yeah it's hard to see it's hard to look at and it's hard because there's some stuff you got to deal with but he'll turn the light on and something happened in me I began to believe I could be something else I began to see that I could be different than what I had been. I began to see that he loved me even when I was what I was. And I began to see that if I would change my mind, he would never change his mind about me. And he will never change his mind about you. Hallelujah. I began to see that he didn't call me because I was pitiful. He called me because he wanted to make me powerful. 
He wants to make you powerful. He don't want you sitting in a dark prison house. He don't want you sitting back and questioning whether or not you can. Can I go ahead and settle that for you? No, ma'am, no, sir, you can't. But he can. Hallelujah. If a prisoner, when he's freed, he'll suffer, he'll starve. How many of, of you have ever seen on TV when a prisoner breaks loose and they can't find him and then they discovered that it took him five years to dig with a teaspoon very patient. You know why? Because he had the mind. He could see himself on the other side of that wall. I could see myself out of my mess. I could see myself on the other side of that. I could see myself get loose and get free from where I was. If you don't ever see it here, it won't ever happen out here. You got to change your mind. You can be free from a slave mentality. You can be free from the old way of thinking and the old way of looking at yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will dig or she with a teaspoon and cover it up and be patient and dig and dig and dig and lose sleep and dig while everybody else sleeps. And when the time comes, risk their life. You know what he said in his mind or what she said in her mind? I'd rather die than stay where I am. I'm telling you what, if some folks would get in a spiritual mentality, I'd rather go on and be with the Lord than to ever go back on him. I don't ever want to be back where I was. I remember what that felt. He could see himself on the other side. You know what? He wasn't worried about a, a, a place to live, a car. He wasn't worried about a job. He wasn't worried. He'd think about that later. If folks would just trust the Lord and leave the details up to him, he'll supply all the rest. Amen. Quit worrying. Look at somebody next to him and say, stop you worrying. Stop you worrying. God's got this if you'll let him. God's got this if you'll let him. Hallelujah. He'll starve, go without food, and avoid areas of comfort just to stay free from the system. Amen. He'll crawl through a two-foot crack in a brick wall, swim his way through the sewer, climb out of a cesspool onto dry ground, and run. That's how I felt when I got saved. Whew. Devil, you behind me, and that's where you're going to stay. Hallelujah. He opened my cell and he said, it's up to you to get out. I'm not going to drag you out. I'm not going to beg you out. Hallelujah. Too many folks, what do they say? Too, too many folks are, are just too petty. They want to be petted and they want to be, uh-uh. You either want out or you don't. It's just, it's just that simple. You want out or you don't. I'm not laying up at night. Hallelujah. I used to walk the floors. And, and don't get me wrong, if you are in prayer and you're travailing for somebody, you're going to lose some sleep and you're going to... But let me tell you something. There's a difference in travailing and praying and praying through for somebody than it is being anxious and worried and getting ulcers and doing all that. I ain't doing it, amen. I'm going to leave it with the Lord, hallelujah, and leave the results up to him. I told you I got a little card on my mirror in my bathroom. Brother Thorne gave it to me a couple of weeks ago and I love it. It's a little picture of David and Goliath. I look at it every time I go in there. I love it. It ministers to me every time I see it. It don't even get old. And little David's reared back and Goliath is standing over him just breathing out and he's reared back with that little sling and it said, you throw the stone and let God do the rest. That's what we got to do. Throw the stone. Let God do the rest. Hallelujah. That prisoner, when he gets out and he runs, he ain't worried about food, clothes, place to stay, a car. He ain't worried about nothing. He wants to be free. Amen? If we just want to be free, indeed, and not get so easily entangled. Not so easily entangled. I preached a message one time called the shallow end. So many folks want to stay right there. But what you don't understand, that's where Paul went shipwrecked. You know why? Because it run aground and tore the ship up. 
And the shallow end is where you feel everything. You get knocked off your feet. Hallelujah. In the shallow end. Some folks want to stay right there. Some folks want to just stay where they can just take one step and go back. They want to stay just close enough to where I can I can go hang out back there if I want to. And I can go to church if I want to because they don't know. I ain't got to know. Ain't nobody sitting by you got to know. Hallelujah. He knows. Is this you today? Breaking free from a slave mentality. I don't know how you felt when he set you free. Oh, but I, do re- I can testify about myself. Hey, some of you sitting in here, you done heard my story so many times, you can tell it better than I can. But I remember. I was raised in that little church, but when I walked out on the porch after I got saved that morning, I walked out there and listen, y'all, I'd been in church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, revivals all my life. My daddy pastored. We was in church six days a week at least, sometimes seven. There had been enough preaching and enough power of God in my life that should have saved the world. I said, you ain't going to get free till you want to be free. He's made the opportunity. His job's done. He's given us opportunity and he's opened the door. The door's wide open. But when I knelt down there, I walked out that Sunday morning. I'll never forget it as long as I live. When I close my eyes, I can still see the sun through those trees. And it's like I'd never seen it before. It was just brand new. It was so bright. And it was so and I was just looking and mama stepped out behind me and she said, What is it, baby? I said, I ain't never seen nothing so beautiful in all of my life. She said, What? <laughs> and I said, that sunshine and them trees, it was as if something had fallen and it had the scales had fallen from my eyes. I was free indeed. And I began to run. I began to run. Somebody in here needs to run. You need to quit chasing and start running. You need to quit chasing things and chasing people and chasing approval and chasing this and chasing that woman and chasing that man, chasing this and chase. You'll chase God, hallelujah, and run with him. He said, all these things will be added unto you. All, the, all your heart's desires. We talked about the kingdom a couple of weeks ago. All your heart's desires. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, I refuse to be a slave to sin. I refuse. I refuse. So you said, all right, you've told me I need to break free. And I hear you about, I need to call on Jesus. I I hear you about that. See, a lot of people are so churched and they've heard and they've heard and they've heard and they've heard, but it never gets past here. I want you this morning to see yourself. In the spirit realm. I I want you to locate yourself. In the spirit realm. And I want you to see yourself where you're sitting. With Jesus right now. Where are you sitting with him? Are you free? Are you free indeed? Where are you at? Where are you at? Or are you like this man? You've asked him to come into your heart. And you're saved. But you're still sitting in a dark place. Haven't totally surrendered all that. Maybe you've been hurt at God. Is there anybody ever had your feelings hurt at God? Anybody? Be honest. 
God, I've asked. I don't understand. Been hurt. Keep them up. Keep them up. It's all right. It's all right. Let everybody look. Hallelujah. I've had my feelings hurt because I felt like somehow that God should have done something different. I felt like he didn't answer me when I wanted an answer. He didn't answer me how I wanted him to answer. Anybody? Anybody? And then all of hell joined in when I got mad at God and said, see, ain't nothing to none of that. He don't care nothing about you. He didn't do it for you. So what if he did it for them? He ain't done it for you. He ain't fixed your problem. He ain't done, does it sound familiar? Don't do no good to go to church. I'm just going. I'm just going because my wife wants me to go. I'm just going because my husband wants me to go. I know I'm supposed to be there, but I'll come back when I'm good and ready. The sad thing is, no, you won't. The sad thing is, you come only by the drawing of the Holy Spirit. If he is ministering to you today, I would run like the prison walls just fell and said you, and they said you got five seconds. You can stay free if you run. If you don't, you're forever chained. I would run to Jesus. I found out one thing. I found out a bunch of things, but I sure found out. I can be mad at him. I can be offended at him. He can never do anything I ever ask him to do again. And I can throw a fit and I can backslide and I can end up in hell. And he's still God. He's still God. Breaking free from a slave mentality. How to break free. 2 Corinthians 10. Three through five. For though we walk in the flesh, anybody know this scripture? Woo, everybody in here ought to be able to quote it word for word as much as we've preached on it. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. So if you're mad at him and you have separated yourself from him, guess what? No wonder you're feeling ever blow. No wonder that you're getting beat up. No wonder you're so depressed. No wonder that you're so down. No wonder that it, life, it, life is just the dumps. No wonder. Because your, might, your weapons are mighty and they're only mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations. I want you to concentrate on this right here. Concentrate on this right here. Imaginations. Imagine any thought, any lie, anything. We just sung about he, there's no lie he won't tear down except one you want to hold. Casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalts itself against what? The knowledge of of God when you think you know better than God you have just exalted yourself above the knowledge of God and that has to be torn down that has to be pulled down that will become a stronghold in your life when you are mad at God and you are upset at God and you're pitching a spiritual temper tantrum amen and 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 you you just refuse to do anything and refuse to and, and you can go on as long as you want to but he's still God every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity 
every thought to the obedience of Christ. When you go, boy, we've done some studies on this. This word right here is a sword. And when you look up reference to this, bringing into captivity is as if to take by a spear. Like if I walked up to Ben and, and just arrested him, it actually uses the word arrested. We need to arrest those thoughts. Arrest those thoughts. Anything that exalts itself above the knowledge of God in our lives as children of God. This man sitting in this cell needed to arrest his thoughts. Amen. Just as you, some of you may have been arrested, some of you may have not. I never have. Thank God not because I didn't deserve to be. I just didn't get caught. Well, to arrest means to stop, to put a stop to. We got law enforcement officers here, Jay, back here. When they go to arrest somebody, they don't go up. Jay, you don't just go up to them and say, hey, man, how's it going? So tell me, tell me, why, why, why did you shoot that fella? We ain't talking about it. Too many folks give the devil their ear about things that exalts itself against God. Thoughts in your mind that you know do not line up with this word. Don't sit around and talk about it. Don't give it time to take root. Don't give it time. If it's gossip about don't talk about it. Do not sit and stir a pot that you don't want to eat. Amen. Hallelujah. Arrest those thoughts. And then ask God. Because remember your weapons are spiritual. So if you're not spiritual and you're living in the flesh, you ain't got no weapon. Mm -mm. According to this word, you don't have a weapon. You are in a war whether you want to be or not. You're in every person in this place. You're in a war. And you are fighting something or you're not fighting at all and just being taken captive. There's a spiritual war going on for your soul. It is, it is of utmost importance that you get this. Put that scripture back up right there, 2 Corinthians 10. We have got to take charge of this right here you will never do anything that it don't come through here first we got to take charge we've got to arrest it with the word of God and bring it under to unto the subjection of Jesus Christ if we know it's wrong we need to pull it down with this word right here. We need to know, if, if, if we know it's wrong, if it's a wrong idea, if it's a wrong thought, we need to arrest it right then and say, you are not saying, I can't do nothing about what comes, but I can sure do something about what stays. Right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Take it and arrest it. Breaking free from a slave yeah. mentality.